Now, this is a popular and controversial alternate history that we are going to discuss today. The question asks, what would happen if Africa was never colonized? Well, to find out what would happen and how in the world it could possibly happen, let's look at the facts. Africa was first settled, or at least touched by Europeans starting on a large scale, after the Middle Ages by the Portuguese. However, much of the continent remained unknown and not colonized by Europeans until the late 1800s. With the knowledge gained from explorers such as David Livingston and propelled by economic, social, and political reasons, Europeans embarked on a large-scale colonization effort for Africa, known as the Scramble for Africa. Of course, there were some British, French, Portuguese, and Spanish enclaves in Africa, and the Orange Free State in South Africa, but for the most part, Africa was under the rule of native Africans. In the late 1800s, with the end of the slave trade, more exploration, and the discovery of vast quantities of raw materials within the continent, it all paved the way for European colonization. Also, advances in technology such as a steamboat, which allowed Europeans to travel greater lengths of African rivers deep into the interior. Maxim guns, which allow for much greater military advantage against Africans, quinine, a treatment for malaria, and other stuff allowed for colonization. And finally, a critical reason why Europeans moved into Africa was due to politics. The rise in new powers such as Germany and Italy in the late 1800s and other factors increased competition among European powers. The Berlin Conference of 1884-85, to to which African leaders were not invited, carved up the rest of Africa that hadn't already been taken hold of in a mad rush over the continent a few years prior. In 1870, less than 10% of African land was taken by Europeans, but by the eve of World War I, a mere 44 years later, 90% of the continent was European held. Only Ethiopia and Liberia managed to be saved. The scramble affected essentially all of African history, and modern history as well. So what if this event never took place? What if Africa was never colonized? Well, for that to occur, one or more of the many factors that led European colonization to take place would have not to take place. Perhaps Europeans never developed quinine and deemed the colonization of the continent too costly to them. Or perhaps they never invent the Maxim gun and other advances in ammunition and would be easily defeated by Africans who would possess the same type of weapons as them. In our timeline, Europeans would tell their modern weapons from Africans and then instead use them to subjugate the natives. So without this happening, Africans would basically be evenly matched against the Europeans and have the advantage of fighting for their home along with knowledge of the terrain. If that is the case, then Europeans would be restricted to their tiny coastal enclaves in Africa. So with the native Africans in charge, what would be different? First of all, a large amount of the power that European nations had during the late 1800s and before World War I would be lost. You see, Africa provided vast pools of labor, new markets, and cheap resources for those nations. So without all of that, the power and importance of Europe would be lost as a whole. Yes, they would still profit from other colonies, but not to as great an extent. Europe will still be competitive with one another as they compete for African trade. Since establishing a colony is out of the questions, they still have to find a way to get all those rich resources in the continent. So the Europeans traded weapons, modern ones, to the Africans in exchange for raw materials. This would mean that Africans, newly provided with machine guns and advanced ammunition, would begin to turn them on each other. Rival groups and tribes would fight one another for European trade, obtain guns, and fight one another again. This vicious cycle would likely continue for several decades, at least until the beginning of the 20th century. There would be mass casualties until a solid government emerges. Like the Atlantic slave trade of our timeline, you could see African kings fighting for resources, then trading those resources with the Europeans. Although in the slave trade, those resources were other humans, these more modern wars would resemble European ones in their motives and how they are executed. How would Africa be governed in this timeline? Most likely, there will be several large and powerful empires in the continent, surrounded by a patchwork of tiny states divided among ethnic lines. Now, people might be shouting that Africans had no way of developing such sophisticated government system as empires, but this is far from the truth. Africans in the past had developed empires such as Songhai, Mali, and Ghana empires in the Middle Ages. However, Africa suffered a heavy blow to its development when millions of its able-bodied men and women were carried across the Atlantic in the slave trade. 
So, Africa will be a shadow of its former glory in the late 1800s. Whatever civilizations that developed will be heavily influenced by European culture and government, and first began on the coast. States such as Ethiopia that adopted European technology in the 1890s and crushed the Italians in the Battle of Adwa would be virtually the superpowers of Africa, facing little opposition from tribal organizations. Since we have mentioned before that Africans that trade with Europeans would have access to modern technology and weapons, their development will be rapidly accelerated. So these Africans in turn would spread out into the interior. We already saw an example of African leaders eager to adopt European ways and build up empires in our timeline. In 1526, King Alfonso of the Congo converted to Christianity due to the Portuguese and wanted to modernize his empire as well. However, due to the depopulation of the slave trade, he was not able to do so. Any states and villages in the interior would be quickly overwhelmed by these newly equipped Africans. Instead of Europeans colonizing Africans, we would see Africans colonizing Africans. Of course, there will be multiple ethnic groups in these conglomerations, but since native Africans will be ruling them, there will be less of a backlash against these new rulers than against the Europeans. So where could these empires begin? The first and most obvious choice is Ethiopia. Menelik II, who was the leader of Ethiopia during the late 1800s and early 1900s, wanted to annex territories that surrounded his realms. Also, he developed a central taxation system, laid the foundation for the capital of Addis Ababa, and developed roads and electricity in his nation as well. So basically, an African leader laid the groundwork for a modern nation-state. This would happen in other areas of Africa as well, although it is hard to tell where for sure. The Ottomans would still control the northeastern port of Africa, including modern-day Egypt. Perhaps the aggressive Zulus of South Africa could expand into areas north of the Orange Free State, or the hotbed for African empires, West Africa, might play a larger role, although this is unlikely due to the fact that it was the epicenter of the slave trade. Or Liberia, a nation established by free African Americans, might use their Western techniques to annex surrounding lands. Most likely, Eastern Europe, Africa, including Ethiopia, would be the instigators of nation building. However, other groups would be modernizing as well, or at least to defend themselves from the imperialists such as Menelik. Eventually, nations will cover at least the coast of the continent and drive ever deeper inward in search of new resources to obtain and trade with. These resources would also make many African nations wealthy, as they are not given to Europeans in this timeline. Well, they are, but like not uh, used for subjugation, you know. Without European exploitation, multiple nation-states aligned along ethnic lines began to prosper. Warring with one another occasionally, they experienced a population boom to replenish the continent's lost souls. Some might say that the interior would remain the home of hunter-gatherers or Africa would remain backwards to the rest of the world. But if it is actively trading with Europe for goods, makes use of its own raw materials, and avoids being taken advantage of, all indicators point to a future in which Africa actually begins to play a larger role in world politics. However, the world wars will not occur, as imperialism is nearly as big in this time. Although I want to discuss the implications of those wars not happening here, it means that the modern world is radically changed. The scramble for Africa contributed to the First World War and the First World War to the Second one. Although this is kind of oversimplifying, that's how it roughly played out. So, with a bunch of nation-states that are mainly homogenous within each state, how would Africa be in the modern world? Well, it would be a viable power in its own right, not the impoverished, underdeveloped area it is today. Africans will be proud of their heritage, and even if they adopted European politics and such, they will largely be believers in African animist religions or in Islam in the north. So, let's first examine the politics of the continent. The empires of the early 20th century will likely be in power today, as World War I never happens and the weaknesses of the monarchy are not shown. Most likely, there will be constitutional monarchies, but still empires nonetheless. The rest of the continent will be split into smaller nation-states, some of which that align with ethnic groups, but others that don't. Native Africans are the political leaders of this continent, and oversee a largely peaceful and stable society that is enriched by many resources of the continent. As seen with the Mansa Musa of our timeline, African leaders gained knowledge from other places and then developed their own technologies as well.
Capitalism is the main economic form to the continent, and Native African arts and culture are prominent in this timeline. Those that argue that Africa would still be underdeveloped clearly do not have a grasp of history or geography. Africa is extremely rich in natural resources, or at least in the sub-Saharan portion, and the reason why many of these resources are not utilized is due to the promise of colonialism. If Africans could develop their own nations to take advantage of the resources, perhaps they would be viable powers in the alternate timeline. And as seen from past examples, Africa was the birthplace of some of the richest and most powerful civilizations in the world. Look at Mansa Musa, for example. The king of Mali for 25 years, Masa was so rich that some estimates put him at being worth over $400 billion. And Timbuktu in Mali used to be a center of learning and knowledge in the Middle Ages. Without the widespread of violence and artificial borders of colonialism, Africa would be on par with at least Asia, hosting several economic giants such as Ethiopia and contributing significantly to the world as a whole.